On our own, we're just a lump of stone. But together, we can rock the world. Dream of Cards TV. Do you like collecting? Then please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click on the like button. Because it does something very special. It makes you younger. Hello YouTubians, the reason why I'm doing this video review is because YouTuber Michael Kane asked me about it. He runs a, a special Smash Hits magazine website. So, if you're a Smash Hits magazine fan, please check that out. And also subscribe to his equally great YouTube channel. I'll put more details in the description. This is a very special review. I'm going to go through the last ever Smash It's Magazine annual sticker album from the 1980s, from 1989. And whilst I'm showing you those stickers, I'll try to explain in the best way possible the huge changes that were afoot in the pop music world at the time. Popular music effectively went down two separate pathways. See if you can work out which acts were associated with which. Notice how the number of stickers has almost halved from the previous year. Dance music would totally shake up the structure of popular music. It certainly wasn't everyone's cup of tea, but teenagers have always gone out of their way to shock and revolt against their parents' wishes. Ever since the birth of rock and roll itself, dance music had evolved from the Chicago house music scene, where the DJs plays the played a central role in creating the music by mixing up samples from lots of different tracks and matching up a suitable beat. Some even consider this new type of music montaging or sound collaging as almost as revolutionary and artistic a statement as punk rock, since being a talented musician was not compulsory. Like with YouTube, nearly anyone with some cheap tools and a bit of imagination could have a go. In fact, the searching out of old dusty vinyl records and mashing up of music from past generations was similar to the way Adam Ant mixed up retro fashion styles from different cultures and periods in time, or how the steampunks today mash up elements from the past with the future. Anyway, dance music remained an underground genre in its Native America, probably due to their strict rules. But in Britain, millions of partygoers drove to random secluded spots in muddy farm fields and derelict warehouses to rave the night away. Newspapers reported on the shocking antics that the older generation's sons and daughters got up to <laughs> at such events. But the threat of banning them simply made them even more irresistible. The previous generations of pop stars had been equally re rebellious and full of youthful ideals and energy. But the few survivors that remained towards the turn of the decade seemed to actively embrace the establishment. And their successors didn't have anything profound to say. They just wanted to become beautiful, corporate, well-groomed pop stars. With perhaps a faint, contrived nod to their rebellious predecessors. But certainly no manifesto for changing the world and fighting against social injustice. If acting out a par was all that was required, is it any wonder numerous famous actors tried their hand at being a pop music icon? And some, like Kylie Minogue, did quite well. And it was the start of the boy band era, which tended to appeal to the very young pre-teen girls. The average reader age of the Smash It's magazine drops from about 14 to pre-teen level. That of course meant that the sex and drug taking innuendos in dance music didn't really sit well with the Smash It's magazine format and hence the number of sales drops as well. Now that you see that sticker album you might want to click on these videos to explore all the other sticker albums from the 1980s, since I've now reviewed every album from that magical decade, starting with the first ever issue in 1984, through to, of course, 1989. And don't forget to check out YouTuber 
Michael Kane's channel and his special Smash Hits magazine website that features magazines and other memorabilia. I've put the links in the description. If you're hungry for more, you might want to watch a rare Davy Bowie ice cream commercial that came out just a few weeks before his first ever major hit, Space Oddity. And how about voting for your favourite band of all time, Out of the Beatles and Led Zeppelin? Who would you consider to be the greatest guitarist out of Jimi Hendrix and Jimmy Page? And who's the best out of Michael Jackson and Elvis Presley? Click on the appropriate video image and vote now and see what other people think as well.